Hey everybody, good evening, praise God. Normally we'd be hearing, welcome to the midweek service here at our church. Well, I guess it is midweek and this is a service. We're serving the Lord, amen? Glory, so welcome to the midweek service at our church. Hallelujah, you are the church. I praise God for you. I praise God for our family. I praise God for your faithfulness and your faith, your great faith. Man, it takes faith to believe the word. It takes faith to believe in a God. It takes faith to believe in Jesus. It takes faith to believe in the book that tells about him. It takes faith to believe in the Bible code. Uh, what? Yeah, it takes faith. God loves faith. We encourage you to have some faith, man. God would do this. Such a time as this. We don't have much time left. I mean, we start counting here shortly. And the end of our first 50-day count, the Jubilee count, all the way to the week, is before the 1st of August. Amen? Two and a half months, baby. Two and a half months. Praise the Lord. Uh, blessings family, says Lila. Clay says, hey, fam. Oh, there's Dan. Hey, good evening, bro. He says, good evening, everybody. Praise God, man. Love you guys dearly, man. So here we are. Welcome to the midweek service here at Vault Line Bible Study. We're glad you've come along with us. Yeah, uh, big stuff going on around the news. But before we get into that, make sure you're saved. Jesus died for you. He's taken your sin. Now he wants to give you his righteousness. The only way you can get to heaven is his righteousness. The only way you can have it is if you'll believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. That he did it for you. That you are in need of saving. You're in need of a savior. You're in need of perfection to get you to God's heaven for eternity. And God's made a way. If you'll believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, that he did all this wonderful, wonderful act for you, his death, burial, and resurrection, boom, you'll be saved. But you got to believe. He's left it up to you and your free will. What are you going to choose to do? Your default hell, you're going there already. You don't have to make any choice to go to hell. You're going to hell. But Jesus Christ wants to save you, man. And he did everything to save you. Now it's up to you to believe. You have a free will. God has given you this gift of free will. Everything God gives is a gift. It's free. He gave you a free will. You, you didn't have to pay for it. You didn't have to work for your free will, right? Why do you think you got to work for his other gifts? When he calls them gifts, they're gifts. They're free. It's grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. Amen? And he's given it to you. Now you got to believe. And if you'll believe in the death, burial, and resurrection on your behalf, Jesus did this for you. Your price will be paid in full. It already has been. It'll be activated on your behalf. And you'll be saved. Once saved, always saved. And unless you've been once saved, always saved, guys, some of my, some of the most spiritual people are assemblies of God. They are sensitive to the things of the Spirit, but they've been following demons all their life. They believe in a demon doctrine because they don't get salvation right. If you don't get justification right, that it's a free gift, the rest of it's wrong. The rest of it's dead wrong. And the Satan has come by, the deceiver, he's come by alongside the gospel of Jesus and has given, has given a pseudo-gospel that's so close to the real thing. And that's what all my friends in the assembly have got. I've got tons of friends that from years ago I used to hang with, you know, they, they owned our bookstore here and things like that, Work, worked the bookstore, worked the rock and roll section, all that jazz. And so I had a lot of friends like that. The Christian school here was located at the Assembly of God Church. And the Baptists went there and, you know, even the, the, the non-charismatic folks went there. And so a lot of friends. I used to do speaking in there, uh, speak for the kids at the Christian school, you know. And uh, they're so close and they're so lost. You better get saved God's way. You better get your justification right before God, being, being right before God, being made perfect before God, God's way. And you'll be saved, man. Our Abba loves giving his children gifts. Every heartbeat is a gift. Every breath. Amen. 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 Hey, Adrian. She says, hey, pastor and family. Uh, we Guys, now make sure you get your salvation right. If your salvation ain't right, I don't care nothing about your spirituality and, you know, all the stuff you believe and how many Bible verses you have memorized. Satan has them memorized. You're going to hell, dude. All the cult leaders, David Koresh had the Bible memorized. But he was a Seventh-day Adventist knock off sat satanist declared himself to be god okay please be saved 
Please humble yourself. Make sure you know you're saved. Be saved God's way by belief in his finished work. And then he will be the justifier of sinners. He will justify you. You're not justified until he justifies you. Amen? And that's your belief. Um, read your Bible 10 to 20 chapters every day. Support Sean. Support him in prayer. Support him uh, financially, okay? Take care of him. Take care of his needs. Buy him, buy him a biscuit. Right on? Uh, maybe take care of his car problem. You know, that kind of thing. Take care of him along the way. Got a couple, of, uh, two and a half months left. Take care of the guy along the way. And uh, maybe real soon, he'll come out with some more Bible codes that fixes our calendar. Wouldn't that be great, man? It's going to be great. And I believe God's going to have him do it. God's going to have it all, everything perfected on this side so it can be continued on the other side when he comes back. Hallelujah. So take care of him. Thank you for taking care of me in prayer. God bless you. And uh, man, you know, Sean has fired off uh, some fresh word for us. Now, we don't have tables. You know, I'll normally show you the picture on the phone. We don't have that. We've just got his notes that he's given us. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and get into those. Boom. Boom. All right. Let's see what he said. Oh, and my notes went squeegee. All right. Hey, you know the Mike Tyson fight's coming up, right? June 20th. Going to be fighting that Jake, whatever his name is, Jake Paul or whatever. It's on the 20th of June, which happens to be the 55th anniversary of the first guy landing on the moon. 55. Now, <laughs> fresh bread yummo. Hey, hey. Hey, man, one more week. Ah, good to see you, Josh. One more week, guys, of the year. That's what he's talking about. And then, boom, we get into our new year. A week from today is New Year's Eve. Rah, rah, ree. An idiot on his uh, church's page says, clearly, all caps, clearly you can see that in the Bible... Matthew 24, that no man knows the day, not even Jesus nor his angels of the rapture. These guys are so stupid. They're preaching. They're the ones preaching in the pulpits. Now, if you could see clearly, you'd know that that whole repertoire, that whole discussion is to the Jews and the second coming. But these guys are pastors and they're too stupid to clearly see what God is saying. So they come across and clearly say what the devil wants them to because they're that stupid. We're going to encourage you not to be that stupid, okay? Matthew 24 and 5 is for the Jews at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are no ten virgins at the rapture. You're either a bride who will be raptured or a whore, okay? You're a bride or a whore at the rapture. You're saved or unsaved at the rapture. You're the body of Christ or you're the body of the devil at the rapture. Now, after the rapture, you're going to have seven years of cleanup. God's going to clean up this place, purify it with fire, water. And then he's going to come back and nobody knows the day or the hour. Clearly, that's what it's really talking about. Read your Bible and understand. Understand the context. Understand who the audience is. Understand who's talking. Understand dispensations. If you'd get your thinking right on dispensations and get that right, how God works with different people groups at different times, and there was a dispensation change in Romans chapter 1 to Philemon. Paul is our apostle of the dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the bride, the dispensation of the body of Christ. It's a whole different group than that one Jesus was talking to. They had no idea about a rapture and the bride of Christ. All they knew about was virgins who were either wise or foolish. And that's the people who, he, who he's going to meet at the end of the tribulation when he comes back and they're going to see him. All eyes will see him. Behold, he came at midnight. The bridegroom cometh. He's coming to earth. He's going to kill everybody who's a foolish virgin. But I'm a virgin. Yeah, but you're a fool dead because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And these people will have learned of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. 
Hamashiach, the Jews especially. They're, they're the number one group here. And at the three and a half year mark, they will have gone into hiding. And then there will be stragglers. And we, we can talk about that here in a bit. Why don't we look at these notes from Sean? Uh, yeah, my notes went way up to the top here. All right. We had some pretty good conversation today. All right, here we go. He says he was looking through the entire Bible. That's the Hebrew Old Testament and the Aramaic New Testament. And in that, the long spelling of Obama, six letters, and his name come face to face twice. Twice. Okay? He says Mitchell and Obama are in the full Bible, Old and New Testament, facing off head to head at each other. Uh, twice using the six letter version of Obama's name. Standing next to it, it says he hated. Obama's going to hate this guy. Obama's going to hate him and the other guy so bad. Just hate, loathe. Because in his heart, he's a murderer and he won't be able to murder these guys. He won't be able to harm them. He won't be able to touch them. You know, that's how all of the devil's people work. O Obama right now, even he won't come hurt somebody. He won't kill his chef. He'll have somebody else kill his chef. Okay, he, he won't kill his uh, former workers who know too much and the lady who wrote his birth certificate. He, he won't kill them. He'll just have somebody else kill them. That's how the devil works. The devil won't go have sex with the women of earth because he doesn't want judge like those who had sex with the women of earth and have an offspring. So he has somebody else do his bidding and they suffer and they go to Tartarus, and they are the ones who are chained down. He has somebody else do his dirty work, but it's still his dirty work at his command. And this Obama's the same way, and he's going to want to kill Sean. He's going to send in some kill teams several times, and they're going to have to die the same way they went in to kill him. Remember Samson, them going in to get Samson, and they did number one thing to him. They did number two thing to him, and none of it worked until the real deal worked. And then they was able to poke out his eyes when they cut his hair. That was the secret. And he finally revealed his secrets to a Jezebel, to a Delilah. And he said the wrong thing to the wrong person. Gave too much information in pride, in thinking, this power is of me. And then his power was taken down. Sean will be here for three and a half years, he and the other guy, and they'll only do the righteousness of God in the glorified state that God had glorified them in. And they'll still be killed. Doing the will of God. The anointed ones. Amen? And so, but it's at a time frame. You, you can't touch them till God says it's time. Jesus, it's not yet my time. They picked up stones to kill him, but it, they couldn't because it wasn't yet his time. And that's the same way Obama's going to want to do. Now, hands off, but he believes in predator drones. You think I'm kidding. That's what he said. We knew he wasn't kidding. We knew that he's such a wuss, he shoots and kills from a distance. And he has somebody else do his bidding. He watched his buddy, his friend, get tortured and raped and destroyed and bloody all over the wall. Benghazi, remember all that? Obama sitting there with popcorn right next to the old heifer. What's her name? Clinton? Sitting right next to her, man. And them boys just watched it all night long. Close circuit. Their gun running operation. He does that to his friends because he has no friends. He loves himself. Narcissist can do away with others. If you happen to leave their life, they're, they're cool with it because they still have their own and they love them and they got the mirror. And that's who this guy is, Barack Obama. What a scumbag. But there's only two of these meetings. You got Sean and you got Obama right there. The long spelling all the way through the entire Bible. All right. And then, of course, Obama hates him. He hated. And Sean's name starts in 718. Imagine that. There's only two in the entire Bible. And they both have 718 in them. Okay, moving on here. John, 718 and 19. He that speaketh according to the pleasure of his own mind seeketh his glory for himself. But he who seeketh the glory of him that sent him is voracious and evil is not in his heart. 
Did not Moses give you the law, yet no one of you observeth the law? That's true, guys. A true man of God comes, and when he preaches, he preaches fire, and it's all before the Lord, in the Lord's presence, representing the Lord, being the Lord's voice. And people in the flesh think that guy is, you know, being a jerk, think that guy is uh, self-absorbed, think that guy is a narcissist. And you got two guys talking behind pulpits. One of them is evil. He speaks about himself and of himself and out of his own wicked heart, and the other speaks out of the word. And people look at it, oh, they'll love this guy and hate the right one. But God knows. God knows who righteous men and women are who stand boldly for him speaking his word. We are true ambassadors, and we always, at all times, represent him, and he knows it. Meanwhile, the people in the flesh don't know a thing. They think they do. They think they're so smarty pants. Because they've been blessed with a humongous dose of earthly wisdom. And they think it's godly wisdom. You better make sure that that discernment you got, that you are, you are so blessed with, is heavenly discernment, not hellish discernment. Uh, one of the most discerning individuals I ever met is a lost meth head who was a head beater. He would jump out of trucks with a shovel handle that had been electrical black taped and just beat people nearly to death at a gas station that owed him money. This guy was ruthless, but this guy was one of the most discerning individuals I ever saw except for himself. He couldn't discern himself. He was a narcissist. And there's a whole bunch of people who have this earthly wisdom, this earthly discernment, but it is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And they discern wrongly concerning God's men. I'm going to encourage you not to be that fool, and not to be of the flesh, not to be in the world. But your discernment, you let it be that of the heavens. You let it be the Holy Spirit of God inside you. You let it be the true word of God. <coughs> And if you can't discern that the Bible code is the word of God, you better just mark your discernment up as earthly, sensual, and devilish. Especially if you're negative toward it. Like that guy I talked to today. That guy's the biggest fool. He's going to hate himself here in about two and a half months. All right. Let's keep reading these notes here. So when, when God sends a man, he only th that man will only speak of God. Speak what God wants him to, but when a man stand, stands in his own position, he'll speak of himself. So what do we have here? We have Barack Obama speaking of himself, the things out of his own wicked heart, and we have Sean, who's come back to speak the, the word of the Lord. That's what this passage is, 718, going right through his name, man, John, 718 and 19. And Sean's name is right at the end of verse 18. And he says, Mitchell... Burns right. Mitchell burns right. His lamp, his light, he burns right. And then reversed, the other direction, it says, he spread out Jehovah. Spread the word, spread the truth. This is who God is. This is who his word is. This is the light. This is the gospel. This is the Bible code. And all things Jehovah, all things Jehovah, all things Jehovah at all times. Heather says, Bob, that's Barack Obama, he's Bob, is a malignant narcissist. Narcissists always need to have the last word. He will hate that Jesus has the last word and his two witnesses are repping Jesus the whole time. Awesome, all glory to God. And that's what's so cool. He's going to kill these guys and he's going to watch them lay dead in the street and he's going to just desecrate their bodies and whatever else and make fun and laugh and hoop de do and after 3 days the spirit of life's going to enter the, the two and they're going to resurrect and go to heaven and then boom the devil falls down he can't leave earth he's trapped here he enters the body of Barack Obama and then it's hell on earth if satan can't leave ain't nobody going to live you're going to get my mark, you're going to die. And everybody who gets the mark dies and goes straight to hell. And everybody else just gets out of his face. And Obama never, ever, ever, ever thinks again that he's going to face those two guys. Hey, narcissist. I beat them, I overcame them. Yeah, I was freaked out when they ascended to heaven. But man, here I am. And then I got a big feeling because the Bible tells us that these two 
olive trees and lampstands, they stand beside the Lord. And I think they'll be next to the Lord when the Lord goes kills them. And I think of Barack Obama, that'll be part of his being scared to death. Those two guys again. Yeah, and you, the narcissist, don't get the last word this time. Listen to what Jesus says here. Be destroyed. Boom! They all die. That's a good famous last word, isn't it? Hear that? All your destruction in hell, eternal destruction. Hearing be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. At the mouth of Jesus, God, having him say that all your eternity. I love it. And the narcissist, they'll shut him down. Jesus will shut him down, man. So, Mitchell burns right, and he spread out Jehovah. Spread him far and wide, all around the world. Ezekiel 12, 27. Son of man, behold, they that are of the house of Israel say, the vision that he sees is for many days to come. Yeah, that prophet, it, this ain't close. Man, that's, that's way off what he's preaching to us right now. That's way off because the other guys are saying we're going to have a financial turnaround. We're all going to become millionaires and we're going to have time to invest into the kingdom of heaven. There's going to be a massive, awesome revival and then Jesus will come. Yeah, that's all a lie. The other guys are all lying. And so they're going to be saying, oh yeah, whatever Sean's preaching, that Bible code, that's way out there. That's That's far off. It's not a pre-trib rapture. It's a mid-trib rapture. So I still get three and a half years to watch my favorite hockey team. Three and a half years to watch my favorite football teams. Three and a half years to go down to my favorite food joints. Retard. Yeah, the Son of Man, be, behold, they say the house of Israel, the vision that he has right now and that he's seeing for many days to come, and it's way out there. He's, he's prophesying about times that are far off. And that goes right through Obama. Th this verse right here. 1 Samuel 26, 9. You know, like 9, 26? 6, 29? Hmm. And David said to Abishai, don't kill him, don't destroy him. Saul, talking about King Saul. Destroy him not, for who can put forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Barack Obama is God's anointed. We knew that in Genesis 3.15. With him talking, God, the Father, talking to Satan, talking about his son, the seed of the woman, because it had to be a human who died for humans. The seed of the woman versus your seed, Satan. And he was talking about Barack Obama right there. He's anointed, he's appointed. God said, I got him in my eyeballs. I know who he is. He will be created. And he will be my anointed, just like Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar and all the others were. And there are always God's puppets. And so Sean's mission ain't to come here and kill him, like Abishai wanted to do. David's going to say, no, 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 he's the Lord's anointed. The Lord will kill him himself. We're going to wait around, be patient. We're going to cry out against these fools, but we ain't going to kill them. Jesus Christ will kill them. And we'll all want to be there to see that. Hallelujah. Glory to God, man. And so that goes right through there. And always remember that he is the anointed one. I mean, do, do you not think that the rider of the white horse is appointed and anointed by God to ride a left-hander holding the bow in his left hand, the left-handed liar? That guy's chosen of God, anointed of God. That's why nobody can touch him. He's untouchable until Jesus shows up to touch him without laying a finger on that scumbag. Who wants to touch poop? Just speak, man. He says, you can't put forth your hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless. Obama is chosen. So awesome. So awesome a truth. And then Obama, Exodus 25, 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That's why they're building this temple, dude. This temple is for the devil, John Hagee. You Freemason freak, you liar, you unanointed Riri, you and your stupid son, and the rest of you word of faith idiots, and the rest of you Christian Zionist. So stupid, so dumb. Don't even know the Bible. That's plain text. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That is Jesus 
but you got one guy that usurps Jesus seven years prior, three and a half years prior. And it's all fakery. It's all lies, man. And Obama, Ezekiel 39, 27. This is pretty cool. This was my devotions this morning, my Bible reading. My 10 to 20 was right here, reading right through this passage, finishing up Ezekiel. We read this passage, and I thought that was so cool when he shows that to me, because that's how God does it, man. This guy goes, who wants to touch poop? <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, guys, Sky knows. She knows. Praise God. Tell her I love her. I love you, Sky. Uh, okay, here's what I read this morning. Ezekiel 39, 27. This is Obama. His name's going through here. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of the enemy's lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Now, here's what's going to happen. The United States, the east coast of the United States, and I don't know wherever else, but we know that for sure, is going to be wiped out the night of the rapture. Then there's going to be a bunch of Jews who are like, you know what, we need to head on back home. And Obama will be helping them. Come on back here. Come on, because the Bible says in Ezekiel that that's what the Messiah is going to do. He's welcoming them back because he wants them all to get his chip. He wants them all dead and in hell. And he's going to welcome them back. Come on back, Jews. We're opening this land up for you. United Nations, uh, UNESCO. We're here for you. Come on back, everybody. Everybody from all the countries, come here. Because, you know, it's easy to kill the Jews all in one place. You won't have to spread yourself out. You won't have to work. You won't have to sniff it out. You won't have to hunt them. Just kill them where they are. Kill them in their beds. That's the game plan. And this is a Messiah verse. And everybody knows that the true Messiah is going to do this. So this fake Messiah, Barack Obama, is going to step forward and do the same thing. So people will think it's him. He's going to call them all forward. Then at mid-trib, the surviving Jews, the one-third, are going to know it's him. They will have believed the preacher's report, 144,000 Jews with yod heh vav -Hey across their head, God, and the two witnesses who had preached to him for three and a half years, they're going to believe their report. And then when Obama steps into that temple to declare himself to be God, because they made a temple for him so he can sit down. This whole thing is for Barack Obama. And here he goes to sit down. And then he's making these great claims in the first three and a half years. Jews, come on home. Come on home. This is where you belong. You don't need to be out there in the middle of this world war. We're going to bring peace, peace, peace. When he says peace, there's sudden destruction. But we're going to bring peace here in Israel, and this will be a, a neutral place. You all come here. There will be no war. There will be no bombs a dropping. We're going to let Gaza be Gaza. We're going to let you all be you all. We're going to have a two-state solution. We're all going to worship together. We're going to have peace together, and nobody will bomb this area again. We're going to put all our bombs away, okay? And we're going to be good little boys and girls, okay? And he's pretending to be the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, he is the anointed one, but he's the false Messiah. He's been anointed to be the false Messiah, the fakery. And so he's going to put this show on and every, all the Jews are going to come in. At the mid-trib point, one-third of them are believers in Yeshua, and they take off to run, and God grabs them on eagle's wings and puts them into hiding. Going to take care of them for the next three and a half years. The other ones are stuck above ground, and all of a sudden, Barack sends out the call. Okay, it's time to get my mark of the beast. And if you don't get my mark of the beast and worship me and call me God and worship Satan, well, then we're going to cut your heads off. And then a bunch of Jews are going to be like, what? And it's going to force them to scatter away to the different nations. And that's when this verse kicks in authentically when Jesus calls them all back from the other nations. Amen. And then it's real at his second coming. When there's no more evil people, he's killed them all, send them all straight to hell. And then he calls all the people back. Now, let's read this with Obama. Obama's name is going through it. And this is at the fakery, at, at the mid-trib point, or, or at the beginning of the trib when he's rising up through the uh, United Nations and being all woozy and schmoozy. And I'm your friend, Jews. Come on. When I have brought them back, Obama, when I've brought them back, the peoples, and gathered them out of all their enemies' lands, all the stragglers from the United States, yes, yes, let's have safety. Come, come to Israel. It's safe here. And, and I'm sanctified in the sight of all them. They, they believe that I'm the Antichrist. 
But now let's hear it as it was actually written by Ezekiel concerning Jesus at the second coming. When I've brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of the enemy's lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Anointed One. And Obama's name starts right there. Um, and then Sean told me, hey, just go ahead and share this. I don't got any pictures for you. Just go ahead and share them. Because he's in the middle of finding this stuff right now. He, he, he didn't really, for his sake, didn't have the time to do, to do that. And we're cool with just hearing the word, aren't we? And that was all in the second table. There's only two tables. They go all the way through the Hebrew and all the way through the Aramaic, okay? And uh, so that was that one. The first one is Mitchell Obama, and their names are encoded, encoded towards positive versus negative. Boom, boom, boom. Positive versus negative. Obama and Mitchell. And this one, too, has 718 in it, where his name is. But both, there's only two in the whole scripture that do this, and they both have 718 in them. Genesis 18, 7. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a, a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto the servant. And he said, hey, hasten dress this thing. He's going he's to feed some friends. And then Mitchell is uh, James 5. It, it's awesome having Old Testament verses and New Testament verses in the same code, man. This is excellent. And so here's Mitchell in James 5, 7. But my brethren... Be ye patient until the advent of the Lord, like the husbandman who waiteth for the precious fruits of his ground, and is patient, uh, and is patient as to them, until he receive the early and the latter rain. And using Obama's short name, that, that was using Obama's long name. There's two of them, and Mitchell, going head to head throughout the entire Bible. But using his short name, which is a letter shy, there's 80. Amen? There's 80 of them. Um, and it says the first one is at a skip of negative 840. You know his birthday, August 4th? 840. Or negative, you'll see 48 first. The sign. The blackened sign. The eclipse. And it says this, at that skip of negative 840. Woe to Obama. Mitchell. And again, it says hatred. Right there, Obama is going to absolutely hate this guy because he's wrecking his plans. It's almost like he's sitting in on his war game planning committee where they're all secreted away down to this quiet, quiet place. No cell phones. It's only them. It's locked tight. Nobody else can hear. Only those in the room. And it's like, Sean, here's everything they're saying. And hollering out, calling it out. And Obama is going to hate this cat. Hate him. Hate him. Praise God, I hate Obama. Well, why not? Standing right next to Sean's name, Hatred. Uh, <laughs> Sean says, I guess he doesn't like me too much. Another one says, Knowledge of the Witness, Mitchell. That's the Bible code. The Bible code. And Obama's going to have knowledge of this guy quickly. He's going to take note. And I think he already knows about it. But he doesn't think much about him. But he knows about him. Because they know about everything. AI and all that. They've been watching Sean for a long time, guys. And in the meantime, witches are casting spells against him. Against his health. Against his house. Against his property. Against him. Because that's what witches do. I'm not being melodramatic. I'm just telling you what witches do. And they're doing it from the local neighborhood witch up until the big ones. Up in the military. And the ones underground that you'll never see. And that's why we pray for our brother. That's why you pray for me. The bringer of these codes. You pray for us. You pray for our households. Because nothing that they have can get to us. But it doesn't mean they're not trying to get to us. They're always fighting us day and night. And they're coming against us with demons, guys. That's how they cast spells. That's how they come against you. And now they use drones. And now they use AI. And they do all the trickery. And so you pray for one another. You pray for Sean. You pray for me. I ask you to pray for me. And I, I thank God that Heather and Cush ask you to pray for me every night, you know, and pray for Sean. Every night it's on these Bible codes, and it's important that that happens. 
because the knowledge of us is out. The knowledge of you is out there, okay? And we pray for you in the same manner because we're Christians. And anybody sp spreading the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, they're going to come against you. And don't ever doubt that. Don't ever forget that, okay? We're not battling flesh and blood. We're battling spirits, demons in the highest realms, man. All right. And so that one says, knowledge of the witness Mitchell. Another has USA standing right next to Mitchell. Hmm. So we know that that goes down first. Something's up. Calling all the Jews. Calling all Jews from USA. All you survivors, come on. From Canada, come on. Mexico, everywhere. From all around the world, come on in here and be safe. We're going to make Israel a peace zone and there will be no war, no fighting, no bombs. Get over here. You know, till mid-trip, then we're going to kill y'all. All right. And then another has Beast standing right next to Obama. Of course it does. And another president standing right next to him. The president, the pharaoh, the beast, the Assyrian, the name goes on and on and on. The son of perdition. Amen. The son of Satan. All right, guys. Praise God. Why don't we go on to where we left off last night. Bangalooski. And this one is the serum is Yeshua. And we were hollering this out. This is February 28th, 2020. And we were hollering out that only Jesus can help you with this thing that was let loose from China. Only Jesus is your serum. He's your serum for anything and everything. We go to him. We don't seek the doctors. We don't seek the clinic. We don't seek the pharmacist. We say, Lord Jesus, please, please help us. Heather says, amen. Praying protection for everyone here. He shall cover you with his wings. You shall trust. Uh, in his wings, you shall trust. His truth shall be thy shield and your buckler. Stay in the word. That's why we say read the word every day. That's your shield. Shield of faith. Amen? Amen. We're not afraid of this stuff. Just be aware of this stuff. And it's nothing more than a, you know, more powerful than a baby sucking on a bottle. Okay? They have no power over us, but just be aware of this. This is what they're doing. And that's why they're trying to draw you into sin and to doubt and to faithlessness. Because if they can get you out there on their battlefield, then they can, you know, kick you in the face a little more often. Amen? Amen. Adrian says, amen. All right. So here it is. This is C19. She's got the link up here. C19, the virus, and the serum is Jesus. Jesus is the serum. Jesus is the fixer-upper. He's the one. This says, Sean's commentary, the Lord Jesus Christ is the cure for all who call upon his name for salvation. This is very encouraging code to see and shows us how close we truly are to the appearing of our Lord. Please take note that the terms virus and serum is Yeshua are at the same parallel ELS, which is incredibly very significant. Okay, they share the same ELS, the skips are exact. God wants you to know that he is the one who takes care of you. He is the one who heals you. He is our healer. He is the physician and the serum, we're told right here. Psalm 91, 10 and 11, There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling, for he shall give you an his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. That's why we don't worry, guys. We don't worry. But this is a warning. Don't be out there in sin. Don't be out there in faithlessness. Don't be out there in opposition to God because you're going to find yourself being the puppet of the devil. He, he can harm you out there. He can harm your family out there. You want to stay under the umbrella of faith, God's walk, and his wings. That's what his wings are, is, is the umbrella of faith. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. We just finished that book not long ago. Be anxious for nothing. But at all times, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make known your request before God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding or comprehension or reason, he, he blows all that away. God and his knowledge and his goodness and his grace, man. And the peace, his peace, you, you can't explain his peace, man. It'll keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ the Messiah. And here's the code. God's word in his dialect. What was that? Skip, 91,863, 91,863, C19. It says this, the C19 virus, the serum is Yeshua. Turn to me. I am the Lord your God. The word of the Lord reveals the creator. 
I am. I am Yeshua. Jesus created. El created. Amen. Elohim, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is our creator. All right. Let's move on here to the next one. The Corona Pandemic. Sean says this is March 11th, 2020. March 11, 2020. Soap may kill COVID-19 virus, but it won't kill the terminal disease called sin. Sin is a spiritual virus and Jesus is the cure. Only the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And then he has a plethora of Bible verses here that show that. So make sure uh, when she puts this up or you just click left, you'll see all those Bible verses and look them over. Man, there's a lot of them. Okay, so our faith can be grown. And how to simply be saved. Amen. It's so simple. God wants you saved. He's done it all. You need to believe. The Bible says that we're all sinners because this we deserve to go to hell. Do you believe that? Yes. Check. She's got the link up here, guys. But the good news is that God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, for your sin. And He was buried and rose again. Jesus did this so we could go to heaven and have eternal life as a free gift, a free gift, a free gift. And that's Romans 6.23. The wages of sin, the works of sin, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And here's the code we're looking at. The Corona Pandemic, Jeremiah 2.22. For though thou wash yourself in nitre and take thee much soap, nitre is soda. You take a little soda and vinegar, well, you're going to have you some action going on there. But you take yourself some soda and some soap, uh, you, can, you can get yourself clean in that, yet your iniquity is marked before me, says God. Your soap, soap ain't going to wash that out. Your, your soap can't even wash out DNA, blood or otherwise. Don't trust in soap. Don't trust in your option of cleansing and cleaning and whitening. God knows the truth. Amen. Won't take care of your sin. And so that Corona pandemic, the cure is Jesus Christ and his shed blood. And check out all those verses. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next one. COVID-19. Sean says, this is from March 13th, 2020. March 13, 2020. This is the shortest ELS of the term COVID-19 that appears in the Old Testament, the Tanakh. And here's the code. COVID-19. And the verse that goes through it is Psalm 56.3. The day that I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you, Lord. Amen. No fear in any of this. We made it through. Everything's fine. We didn't have to wear that stupid diaper and none of that stuff. Amen. And that's what it says. The, the day I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you, Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? And we were hollering this. Guys, from the rooftops back in the middle, or at the beginning of it all. You see, the beginning when we shown was January. Saying, Jesus is your serum, dude. Quit doing this. Quit, quit doing anything stupid. And just obey the scriptures. Walk with Jesus in this whole thing. All right. This one is from March 20th, 2020. That's a lot of 20s there. 3 20 2020. Hmm. March 20th, 2020. Sean says, this code, it, it's jump between words. That sounds an awful lot like ELS to me. That sounds an awful lot like a Bible code. Let's see what Sean has to say. He says, this code is describing the methodology known as the ELS, or the equidistant letter sequences, those wonderful, perfect astronomical skips, and every word on each of these code tables is at the perfect skips. And that's why they belong, and that's why they're there in each table matrix. Uh, the skipping in the Bible. This is the Bible code, also known as the Torah code. Skipping or jumping the letters equally can reveal encoded words and a continuous string of these words can reveal encoded phrases or sentences. He continues, the key code which unlocked this particular matrix is highlighted in red. The string of 21 letters, that's those red 21 letters you see going up here. They form seven words forming, they contain seven words, forming a clear cohesive sentence which spans throughout the entire Tanakh from Genesis to Malachi. Okay, let's see what that skip is. 
That is 227,843 negative. So it's going from the bottom up, okay? From the bottom up, you see that red line, it goes from all the way at the bottom of the page to the top of the page. That's the north and south border of this particular code matrix table, okay? Let's see what it says here. Translation, God's word in his dialect at that astronomical skip of 227843. Here's what it says. Jump between words. A saying formed thousands you will construct. A scientific discovery. What? Yep, mathematical and science. It's a scientific discovery here. True science. It skipped equal sequence. A wonder will be encoded for me. All the Bible unsealed. It is wonderful. This is God talking. This is what God thinks of the Bible code. He thinks it's wonderful. He thinks it's awesome. He thinks it's great. He thinks you ought to be impressed by it. Not, um, uh, you better come to know Jesus, man. Come to know him. Come to know the word himself. Oh, it's wonderful. I've given his gift. God says what Sean has is a gift. He's the one with the gift to do this. I've given his gift. This is me, Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach, your Messiah, Jews. I've given him the gift to do this. And you'll see this when it's in your hands. I've given his gift with thanksgiving. God is so thankful that he's the guy. God's so thankful that he come around finally, the offspring of Moses, the one who would be chosen, the chosen one. You don't mess with the chosen one. There, Abishai. Touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophets no harm. He's the anointed of the Lord. Now, we know Obama's the anointed of the Lord. We don't touch him. How much more are we going to touch him? Final says, mathematics is the foundation of science. Exactly, man. Praise God. Have given him his gift of thanksgiving. Yeshua revealed to him true prophetic fire before the Lord. Thanksgiving. My splendor is in Yah. Sean gives him thanksgiving for the privilege to do it. We give God thanksgiving for, for having it, for being able to read it, to know it, to understand the heart of God. This amazing mathematical, scientific experience, man. True, true. Thanksgiving, my splendor. This knowledge is a gift of the lexical understanding. God has given him a gift to understand Hebrew and Aramaic. He, he's got the gift to understand it. He, he can speak it. He knows it. He, he knows how the verbs and the adjectives and all that other stuff works. And that's a gift from the Lord. Let's read that again. Jump between words. A saying from thousands you will construct. A scientific discovery. It skipped equal sequences. A wonder will be encoded for me. All of the Bible. Unsealed. It's wonderful. I've given his gift with thanksgiving. Yeshua revealed to him true prophetic fire before the Lord. Thanksgiving, my splendor is Yah. This knowledge is a gift of lexical understanding. The languages, understanding the languages and how they're to be spoken. Okay? Sentences, paragraphs, books. You know, one with 520 codes in it? 800 plus pages? Amen. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that were not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The Bible codes God's pleasure and He gave it to us the end from the beginning. It was always there. We just had to get it from heaven to here. It took a computer, it took the end of days, and it took Sean Mitchell to do it. And boom, here we have it. Proverbs 25 2. There it is again. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Daniel 2, 21 to 22. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He is, that revealeth the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word fire? God's talking. Is not my word like fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces? Yes, it is. It sure is. And that's why we meet here every night. We love it. Let's look at the next one. 
This is March 27, 2020. March 27, 2020, and it simply says COVID-19. Okay, and let's see what it says about it. Sean's commentary. He says, searching for COVID-19 and Yeshua led me to finding this code. This is one of many codes about the virus with the same message. God wants everyone to turn to him and be healed. There's only one hope in Jesus Christ. Outside of him, there is no hope for you, man. And here's the code by Sean, God's word in his dialect. At the skip of 66,352. 66,352 saying COVID-19. I always like that 66. That's the numbers of the Bible, the books of the Bible. Here's what it says. God's word in his dialect. COVID-19, Yeshua is the physician. Uh, we've got that in the plain text, right? He's the great physician. And now we have it here in the coded text. He's the great physician. And there is hope for thy future, saith the Lord. Place your faith in him. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here in these last days, these last moments, he'll get you there. Psalm 103, 2 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. Glory to God, all means all. Psalm 32, 2. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Amen. Amen. And this will be so important in the time of the tribulation for these folks. Because, guys, this was the on your mark, get set, go. This is the testing ground one. This is the, um, the da data gatherer for all them. They sent this out and said, okay, here it is. And they gathered data how to make the next ones better. And God, when he sends his pestilence, that's that black horse, the third horse, when he sends his you know, famine and whatever, and then the pestilence is that green horse. When he sends all that, it's going to be this on methamphetamine. It's going to be cranked up. It's going to be bad. It's going to be killing some folk. And so is also that dust and everything from Nibiru. Okay? All, we studied that last night. It's going to be killing folks, choking folk, killing them dead, man. Poisonous, toxic, everything. And even in that time, Jesus is your physician. He'll save you. What you need... Saving from what you what you need this physician to do for you mostly is to rid yourself of your sin. Okay? He's already done that. And you need to believe that. And you need to walk in that. You need to walk with him. You need to follow through and endure to the end during the tribulation. Right now on this side, we believe. Amen. All right. Praise God. Let's look at the next one. Uh, and th that was what? Let's just read that again. A quick little code. COVID-19. Yeshua is the physician. Amen. Let's look at another one. This is April 1st, 2020. April 1st. God hates social distancing. He hated it with a passion. He's called us to greet one another with a holy kiss. How can you do that from six feet away? Hmm? All this was the devil in opposition to God says this, Sean's commentary, social distancing appears once in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And here's the code. Disgust for a brother is the social distancing. Those who say, keep to yourself. Don't come near me, man. See a lot of that? Following the devil, God is disgusted with that. He hates that with a passion because he's the healer. He's the one who helps us. And all you people believe in you got to wear that diaper. We were telling you don't then. We're telling you don't now. You follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 65, 5, which say, Stand over there by yourself, or come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. God hates it. You ever have smoke go up your nose or burn your eyeballs? That's what God says this is to him. It's greater than that of an irritant to him. He hates it. He despises social distancing. And what was that skip? That was over half a million negative from the bottom to the top. And that covers both the south and north border on this matrix table. The skip was over half a million in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Incredible. Discuss for a brother is social distancing. Those who say, keep to yourself, don't come near me. Oh, God hates it. One more. 
The epidemic, the plague of the year 2020 at this time is Corona, the crown. And all these people were teaching, oh, that's the first white horse because he's wearing a crown. He's he got a crown. And no, it's not. We were hollering out. No, we lost a lot of friends. We got blocked by several folks who are still rolling on and rolling in the numbers and they're still wrong because the first horse is Barack Obama. Okay? And he's wearing a crown. He's been given a crown by the devil himself. The devil rules this world. He's the God of this world. And he's given him the crown. He is his anointed one too. He's God's anointed one and he's Satan's anointed one. He's the anointed one. Amen. Uh, mathematics is the founder. Okay, I, I missed. Lila says, Adrian, amen. And I totally missed what, what that was about. All right. All right, here we go. Sean, this is from April 3rd, 2020. He says, this code is amazing because the code itself declares what we are seeing right now and shows us that it was meant to be seen during this time. The two terms of United States are quite significant here as they both connect to behold a crisis. Behold a crisis. Behold a crisis. United States of America. Behold a crisis. And they connect, man. All right. And he says, just keep trusting the Lord. He's the one that is in total control of this. Not man. He's in control. Jesus is in control. Trust at all times. Even right now, whatever struggle you're going through, whatever health issues you're going through, Jesus is the great physician. Trust him. If you've prayed to him to heal you and he hasn't, good. Trust him. You just keep praying. He may want you to pray some more, but you trust him and you praise him, even if he doesn't answer your prayer according to the way you've prayed it. Because we've got to make sure we're praying according to his will. And if we're praying according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know that we have the petition that we're asking of him. Okay? Your whole life is to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ and praise him at all times. Miss Catherine says, amen. Good to see you, sister. We're looking at this code from April 3rd. Heather has the link up here. And what does 2 Timothy 1.7 say? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound thinking. And here's the code by Sean Mitchell. God's word in his dialect at a skip of 37,566. 37,566. 37,566. And it too covers the north to south border here. And it says this at that, sk at that skip, these amazing words. The epidemic, the plague of the year 2020 at this time is Corona. And next time it'll be something else. There's coming in next time. There's going to be some plagues and it's going to be doing some kill and some dying off. And they'll also have some flu numbers involved alongside this one. It's going to kill some folks. <clears throat> Here's the translation. Well, he says the search term, the plague of the year, 5780. And then he shows it right there in the, in the Hebrew. It shows that the word crown is halo, corona, or crown. Okay. And then the translation, God's word in his dialect, the epidemic, the plague of the year, 2020, at, is at this time, is Corona. United States, behold a crisis and a precursor. Precursor to others that just get more enhanced and enhanced and enhanced and enhanced. And everybody was saying, this is the mark of the beast. This is a mark of the beast. We're saying, no, this is a precursor. This is getting everybody ready to have that place under their skin. This is a precursor. This ain't the real deal. This is the, on your mark, get set, go. This is the starting line, the precursor. Those in the West and those in the East were seized with terror. And boy, weren't they? Everywhere you went, man. And what was so terrible is keeping all the elderly isolated from their families. Satan, social distancing, God hates it. God is disgusted with it, man. We're here to hug folks. That's the healing. There's little babies. When little babies are ailing and mommy hugs them or papa hugs them, they find healing in that. They find a calmness in that. But when you separate them and have separation anxiety, adults can have that, right? Teenagers can have that. Babies have it. The elderly surely has it. And that's what Satan was after. Creating anxiety in everybody, man. Amen. 
Let's read that again. God's word in his dialect will call it a night. The epidemic, the plague of the year 2020, at this time is corona. United States behold a crisis and a precursor. Those in the West and those in the East are seized with terror. It was worldwide. And we're called never to be afraid. Never to be afraid. Whatever befalls you between now and the next two and a half months, water off a duck's back, dude. Make sure you're walking with the Lord. Make sure you believe His Word. Uh, there's a lot of people water off a duck's back who hate uh, off their back. Hate God. Uh, I watch a guy every night. He's got the he's got the wisdom and the discernment of the world, and it is incredible. But he's agnostic. He hates Jesus. He ain't into Jesus. He don't care nothing about Jesus. Blah 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 blah. And he ain't afraid of nothing. And just watch me go. And that ain't of God. There is a godly side of that. And there is a satanic side of that. And you and I are called to do all things heavenly, all things scripture, all things in belief, all things in faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is of sin. It's sin. Amen. We don't want to be part of that. Praise God. Love seeing y'all tonight, man. Let's pray. And we'll, by God's grace, see each other tomorrow night. Amen. Papa, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truths. Thank you for giving us a now truth at that time when we were needing it. When we were needing encouraging, when we were needing your touch, your gentle touch, and your wonderful, honest truth, and your protection, and your wing, and your antidote, your serum, you. Thank you for providing us you and reminding us of your provision and what all you encompass and then some. We love you. We're so grateful. We're so thankful that you've... Uh, allowed us to be the people who live at this time to see all these things, to see your word, to see your Bible code, to see Sean Mitchell's handiwork, and to meet Moses. Lord, you're so good. You're so good to us, and we praise you for that. I pray for his health. I pray for all of our health. I thank you for um, just raising us up out of deathbeds and touching us and reminding us to that you're, you're anointed or you're anointed. And you got plans for your anointed. And uh, help us do what we've got to do concerning your anointed. Both the evil ones and the righteous one. And we pray. We pray earnestly for one another to be encouraged, to be lifted up, to finish this race well in the lane you've called us to. And may we do that for your glory. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Wicked men speak for themselves. Godly men speak for God. Just remember that. Uh, what does it mean when you get sleep paralysis? I know it's a demon attacking. I got one last night. Yeah, just speak Jesus. Jesus till they go. Speak Jesus. Um, is there sin in the house? Is there sin in the house? And the demon's jumping on you. And also, guys, uh, amen, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus' holy name. Amen. Great word about giving thanks and waiting for healthy, whether it arrives or not. Funny, I think this might be the first time in a while that I've not had overall great health. I'm going to open this up. Hopefully I can read it. Uh, you set a great example, JB, going for it. Amen. Daniel, Dan the man, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, holy name, amen. Sleep paralysis, guys. Um this happens with a demon, and it can also happen with a witch when they do astroplane. They can astroplane themselves, and sometimes God lets them into a Christian's home because the blood is missing somewhere. Now, remember what God told us. A righteous wife will bless an unrighteous husband, or vice versa. A righteous husband will be the blessing over an unrighteous wife, a believer or an unbeliever. Okay? So we remember those things. And we're safe. They can't get into us, but they will try to attack. And devils will do this. Uh, if you happen to know a family member who's a witch, Santeria, whatever, and they hate you, they despise your Jesus, they'll try to come against you in astral projection. And they'll come to you and they'll sit on your chest and try to choke you to death. And we get the name Jesus out. And then we pray, Jesus, please, whatever's allowing them in, I pray you'll... Have us block that, and you, you block that, Lord. You, you're my salvation there, too. You're my salvation in all things. You're the great physician, the great healer. You're the great demon caster outer. Isn't Jesus great at casting out demons? 
And please don't let them in my home, Lord. And if there's anything that I'm allowing that to happen, an open door, an open gateway. Remember, there's only one gate to hell, but there's many gates from hell. That's what Jesus said. The church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It didn't say they would come and knock you in the head once in a while. It said that they wouldn't prevail in doing that. So we overcome them by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and loving not our lives at the end. Jenny says, it happened to me after my dad took himself. Yeah. Jenny's daddy committed suicide over a lie. Somebody was lying about him. And he got into a, a deep place, a dark place he shouldn't have gotten. And he took his life while the girls were gone. And then this started happening to her. His demons tried to jump her, the daughter. That's what they try to do. They don't want to leave the family. Remember, demons have territories. We see that in the Prince of Persia. Okay? And they have territories, and they don't want to lose their territory. So you may have a territorial devil after you, or a territorial witch. Okay? Somebody casting spells. And many times it could be within your own home. People doing it, attacking you. And so we, we realize that. We're like, okay, okay, I know what's going on here. Lila says, there is witches around me. I always pray over my children, husband, and home. Good, good. Pray over yourself. Say, Lord, never let this happen again to me. Okay? Uh, yep, the night terrors. It's all demon-inspired, man. They're wanting to get in with your frequency, messing up your chi. Okay, they have chi. They have chi, but they're trying to mess up your walk with the Lord, your revelation with him. Okay? My husband comes from a generation of witchcraft. Now, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Okay? That is it. We're going to put our finger on that and say, that's it. So now you, we, we're all going to pray for you specifically. Lord, close that door from the husband. Close all the witchcraft. Close him down. And we're going to pray that right now, guys. Okay? Lord, I pray for Lila I, and everybody like her. I'm praying for everybody like her right now, myself included, Sean, that you'll keep the witches and the devils away from us. And I pray you will break that curse on her husband's side to her husband, through her husband, and his maybe involvement in things he shouldn't be involved with, keeping that door open. And I pray you'll bless Lila, keep her from having to experience that, and we plead your blood, Jesus. We, we know your blood cleanses from all sin. Your blood is all-powerful. You are our blessed hope. You're our wonderful physician, and we pray for it. We pray that you'll just block out those devils. You'll create a door of angels. Send your angels there, Lord, that will... Just stop these witches in their tracks and brutalize them. Have those witches know that they've come against you in this. And it's not Lila they're dealing with. They're dealing with you, her daddy. And I pray that you'll do this. I pray you'll put those angels around and just bust these people in the chops while they're out there coming to get her. And even demonic forces too. I pray you'll break it all down and make her pl place a place of peace, Lord. May she trust absolutely in you continually like she has been. And just uh, just up her walk with you, Lord. Up her walking with you and knowing your word and understanding your heart. And thank you for that blessing for us to be able to do that. And may this never happen to her again. We're praying in your wonderful mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord Jesus Christ, we plead your sinless blood over everything. Vano says, read the word in big chunks. This will help in combating those times when the enemy comes against you. It'll strengthen your faith and remind you that faith comes from Jesus. Amen. It's the word, guys. That's how, you know, when people, uh, Adrian asked the other night about deliverance, okay? The Bible is your deliverance. It is the Bible that'll deliver you from evil. Your knowledge of God, your trusting in Him, your faith, blowing like a glowtorch, blowtorch. And the devil can't handle that. The devil hates the light. Roaches hate the light. Rats hate the light. Flip on the lights, man. Get some Jesus up in there. Amen. 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 Jesus, amen. Bless your devices in Jesus' name. Yeah, all your devices, Lord, because they're all gateways. Your phone is a gateway. Your TV is a gateway. Your laptop's a gateway. Your booklets are gateways. And just close the doors there, Lord. On all my family, you have the power over your daughters, who anybody under your home, under your wing. And you pray over that. Say, close these gateways, Lord. And build my faith, inc increase my faith, my knowledge of you. And the devil can't handle that. The devil cannot handle the blazing torch of his word. The name Jesus, his blood, and the word, it's all Jesus. Yep. Amen.
It's all Jesus. That's what he said. That's how they're going to overcome them in the uh, tribulation. They love not their lives to the death. And it's the word. It's the blood. The power of his name. Amen. Hallelujah, guys. Dan says amen. Catherine says amen. Praise God. Love y'all. And by his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Love you.